The earth is heating up, the polar ice caps are melting, and the sea level is rising. We see it on the news. We hear it from Sir David Attenborough, and there are over 800 million hits for climate change on Google. Now, sometimes this information can feel overwhelming and hard to navigate, and it ends up not being clear what it's got to do with you, me, or the economy. What is at risk for us right now? Well, this is the question that Climate Node is trying to answer. My name is Elliot, and I've been working with them for the past few weeks. And we've been working to better understand climate risk through connected information and data science. On their website, Climate Node have an interactive map that shows how climate hazards can impact you and the lives of your communities, along with things like economic activity and natural resources. And with this now, you can understand the issues near to where you live at the touch of a button. So now if we look at England, for example, we'll see that agriculture is being affected by heat waves in the Midlands and drought is causing houses to sink into the ground and their walls to crack in the south. So the way that Climate Node is doing this is by collecting and linking information from news articles, reports and scientific journals and this connected knowledge is gonna be useful for researchers and government bodies making decisions about our future. So Climate Node is doing a great job, but how they're doing it is entirely human led. And so it's time consuming. What they need is data science and AI to help speed up and automate their pipeline. And this leads to some questions to solve. One, how do we find the relevant documents and then how do we go about extracting the key information from these, which is, comes in the form of the hazard causing the issue, the sector being impacted, and the location where it's taking place. And then really we'd like to discover new information that we're not already looking for. Well, to develop this pipeline, I looked at the Thomson Reuters research collection. Now looking at Reuters news was great because it's global, it's in real time and it's reputable, which is especially important for any data science deployment. And this collection had almost 2 million articles. So the first step was plenty of cleaning and pre-processing. But once the cleaning was done, I could look at how to find and extract these, this key information. Now getting a computer to understand and draw insights from words and text is difficult. So it's always useful to be inspired by how a human might go about it. They might start by highlighting all of the relevant keywords, and then they might rank all these different articles by the number that they found. Well, with a computer, I can do both these tasks incredibly fast and speed up the filtering and reviewing processes. And this worked well, but I could identify that there were some drawbacks. As we have to tell the computer exactly what we're looking for. So if we don't tell it to look for the word drought, it will never tell us about it. But if we only tell it to look for the word drought, it's never gonna tell us about droughts. And then there's also the issue that words can have multiple meanings. Is this the climate drought we're interested in or something else like a goal scoring drought? Well, we can actually improve this search process with the help of transfer learning, which is where we take a big pre-trained model and tailor it to our specific needs. And with this, I was able to develop a keyword generator that combined these family of words with different suffixes, but also help us to discover new related keywords. So now we can cast a wider search net. But we can still do more. We can actually learn the context of the words around the keyword with the help of entity recognition models. Now, unfortunately, these neural networks need good labeled data, which can be hard to get a hold of. So as a proof of principle, I developed a tool for labeling the word drought in these different cases. And training this model, I was able to achieve a 90% accuracy of identifying climate drought versus other types. But what was more remarkable about this model is they was able to, to discover new keywords like heat waves all on its own, purely from the context. So now looking forward, I've developed this pipeline that can find, extract, and discover. But I encountered the bottleneck of needing 
more labeled data. But actually, this is a well-known problem for entity models. And so there are off-the-shelf solutions available right now to speed up this process. And with this, Climate, now can up, Climate Node can now upscale from processing tens of articles per day all the way into the thousands. And they can expand this pipeline to look at other global media and science information sources. And so now, by using this connected information, Climate Node can help you to understand the risks near to you and around your world. So thanks for your time today.